Now moving on to terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Now terrestrial ecosystems, namely tundra forest, boreal forest, temperate deciduous forest, tropical rainforest, savanna, steppes, deserts have been discussed earlier in this booklet. Now important terrestrial ecosystems required from prelims point of view will be discussed in this chapter. Now the Indian forest types based on Champion and Seth classification of forests are grassland ecosystems. These are these are the forests. Uh, basically, these are tropical evergreen, tropical wet evergreen, tropical semi evergreen forest, tropical moist deciduous forest, littoral and swamp forest, tropical dry deciduous forest, tropical thorn forest, tropical dry evergreen forest, tropical broadleafed hill forest, subtropical pine forest, subtropical dry evergreen forest, mountain wet temperate forest, Himalayan moist temperate forest, Himalayan dry temperate forest, subalpine and alpine forest. Now, moving on to grass ecosystem, grassland ecosystem. These are found in region where the rainfall is about 25 to 75 centimeter per year. Now, rainfall is not enough to support a forest, but more than a true desert. Now, steppes formations are found in western Rajasthan, while dry savanna grasslands are found in central and eastern part of Rajasthan. Now, fire is a natural part of the grassland ecosystem, which helps control trees, woody shrubs, and invasive species, and maintains its health, maintains its health and vigor. Now, hazy, heavy grazing is in grasslands lead to reduction of the mulch cover of the soil. Microclimate becomes dry and is readily invaded by xerophytes. Due to the absence of humus cover, the mineral soil surface is heavily trampled. It reduces the infiltration of water in soil and accelerates runoff, resulting in soil erosion. Now, Bani grassland of Gujarat is the largest natural grassland in the Indian subcontinent. Maldhari tribes dominate this area. A huge freshwater lake that is Chari Dhan is a prominent feature of Bani grassland. Moving on to desert ecosystems, animals are physiologically and behaviorally adopted to desert conditions. They are fast runners, nocturnal in habitat. Inhabit have long legs to keep the body away from the hot ground and conserve water by excreting concentrated urine. Now, Thar Desert is an example of Indian desert. It is home to the great Indian bastard flamingos and Asiatic wild ass. Now, Asiatic wild ass, also known as Gudgur in local Gujarati language, is a subspecies of Oingur native of South Asia. The animal has no predator in that area, but its existence is threatened due to destruction of habitat. It is currently listed as near threatened by IUCN. Now, cold deserts of India is found in Leh Ladakh, Kargil of Kashmir, Spiti Valley of Himachal Pradesh and some parts of Uttarakhand and Sikkim. The soil of this region is sandy to sandy loam, while the pH type is neutral to slightly alkaline. Now, Tibetan wild ass that is Kiang and snow leopard are important fauna found here. Some of the pointers for prelims would be Forest Plus 2.0 is a 5-year program focusing on improving the status of forest in three terrains in Bihar, Kerala and Telangana has been launched by USAID and Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now, Kerala has adopted the Miyawaki style of forestation technique to create urban forest. The Miyawaki forest method, also known as potted seeding method, is an afforestation technique that uses native species to create dense multi layered forests. Now, New York Declaration on Forest is a voluntary and non binding international declaration to take actions to halt global deforestation. Now, Bond Challenge was launched in 2011 by government of Germany and IUCN. It envisages a global goal to bring about 150 million hectares of degraded land and deforested landscape into restorations by 2020 and 350 million hectares by 2030. Now, Red Sanders is an endemic tree of South India. It is found in tropical dry deciduous forest of Karnataka. IUCN has classified it under endangered category. Now, Shola forests are stunted tropical mountain forests found in Nilgiri, Anamalai and Palni Hills. Now, Nilambur tea grown in Kerala's Nilambur region is first forest produced to get GI tag in India. It exhibits high resistance to fungal decay and has antioxidant properties. Now, kel forests are large brown algae seaweeds. They grow in underwater forests in shallow oceans, nutrient-rich waters. Generally speaking, kelp help live farther from the tropics than coral reefs. However, a few species have been known to occur exclusively in tropical deep waters. They are considered a keystone species. They help reduce coastal erosion and act as a breakwater during large storms. They are an important source of potash and iodine. Many kelp produce algin, a complex carbohydrate useful in industries such as tire manufacturing, ice cream industry. Now, uh, Indian, for Indian State of Forest Report of 2019, the ISFR report is a bilineal publication of Forest Survey of India. Now, the forest cover area-wise, MP was the highest, Arunachal Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, then Odisha. Now, Forest cover percentage wise, Mizoram wise was highest, then was Arunachal Pradesh, and then was Meghalaya. Now, the total forest and tree cover of the country is 24.56. These data are changing, so we'll see the updated report. Now, special features of the ISFR 2019 was that it included the extent of trees outside forest. Now, moving on to the State of World's Forest Report 2020 is published by FAO and UNEP. 
The report assesses progress to date in meeting global targets and goals related to forest biodiversity and examines the effectiveness of policies, actions and approaches in terms of both conservation and sustainable development and outcomes. The report focuses on combining conservation and sustainable use of forest biodiversity to create balanced solutions for both people and the planet. Due to increasing population, pressure on forest resources have increased. This has led to higher frequency of forest fires. In general, forest fires play an important role in forest ecosystem. It helps recycle nutrients, remove invasive species, maintain habitat for some wildlife. In a way, forest fire helps in better regeneration of tree species. However, as cycles of fire has spun out of balance, forest fires have become a global concern. Now, forest fires have drastic impacts like it releases billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere thus aggravating global warming. Now, habitats of several animals are destroyed. Exposure to smoke from forest fires has led to health issues in humans. Forest fires have also major impact on microclimate, thus affecting local, local weather and precipitation pattern. Now, some of the reasons for fire, fire, forest fires include natural causes, including thunderstorms and volcanic eruptions. Dry deciduous forest in India faces five to six months of dry period and are vulnerable to fires. Man-made causes include, sla include slash and burn cultivation practiced in Northeast India, also, many a times people visiting forests would leave behind inflammable materials like burning BDs, thus catching fire. Now, Australian bushfire was the most devastating bushfire faced by Australia in at least 20 years. Although bushfires are a common feature in Australia, the spread and intensity of 2020 bushfire was never seen before. Some of the reasons for 2020 bushfires include prolonged drought in the region, rare stratospheric warming over Antarctica, which contributed to the unusual heat and dryness in Australia. Now, there was a presence of positive Indian Ocean Dipole, which is often associated with more severe fire seasons in Southeast Australia. Now, climate change has also increased the intensity and frequency of fire, forest fires. Now, deemed forest, these are areas that are like forest but are neither recorded nor notified. Supreme Court has ordered that states classify them as deemed forest. Deemed forests are already a legal category of forest in some states. Now, Forest Advisory Committee is a statutory body established under Forest Conversation Act of 1980 which considers questions on diversion of forest land for non-forest purposes such as mining townships and advises government on the issue of granting forest clearance. Moving on to aquatic ecosystem, now aquatic ecosystems of water as the main habitat are known as aquatic ecosystems. Now aquatic organisms are classified based on their zone of occurrence and their ability to cross these zones. Neostones, they live at the air-water interface, examples beetles and back swimmers. Periphytons, these organisms remain attached to the stems and leaves of rooted plants, planktons. These groups include microscopic plants like algae and animals like crustacean and protozoan, that is zooplankton, and their locomotory power are primarily controlled by ocean currents, which means they are limited in their locomotory power. Moving on to nectons, these group, these group contain animals that are swimmers. Now, benthos are organisms which are found in the bottom of the water mass. Factors like sunlight and oxygen are the most important limiting factor of the aquatic ecosystem. Other factors like dissolved oxygen, transparency and temperature also influence their habitat. Moving on to wetland ecosystems, wetlands are areas of marsh or peatland with uh, water that is static or flowing, fresh, brackish or saline, including areas of marine water, the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meter. Now, wetlands, wetlands are ecotones between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Wetland occupy 18.4% of the country's area, of which 70% is under paddy cultivation. They are usually rich in nutrients and have abundant growth of aquatic microphytes. The wetlands support high densities and diverse fauna. Wetlands are of inland wetland and coastal wetland. Now, coastal wetland can be natural like estuaries, lagoon, creek, corals, mangroves, or man-made like salt pans. Now, inland wetlands could be natural like lakes, ponds, swamps, and man-made like reservoir tanks. Now, functions of wetland is flood mitigation, water purification, groundwater recharge, habitat to flora and fauna, and nutrient cycle. Now, moving on to leak ecology, a body of standing water generally large enough in area and depth, irrespective of hydrology, ecology, or other characteristics, is known as leak. Aging of lake occurs as it accumulates minerals and organic matter and gradually gets filled up. Lakes are less productive than estuary ecosystem but are more productive than oceans. Now, the term oligotrophic is used to describe lakes with low primary productivity due to nutrient deficiency. Now, eutrophication is the process by which a water body of water becomes overly enriched with minerals and nutrients from activities like agricultural runoff, disposal of industrial waste and sewage discharge. This in turn induces excessive growth of algae. Now, dead zones or hypoxia is refers to reduced levels of oxygen in water resulting from eutrophication. When excessive algae due to eutrophication die, they decompose. The bacterial decomposition of their biomass consumes the oxygen in water, thereby creating a state of hypoxia. 
Eutrophication thus leads to decreased biodiversity, new species invasion, toxicity and migration of species. Gradually, the water body is reduced to a marsh. Now, oligotrophic versus eutrophic. Oligotrophic leaves and eutrophic leaves. The parameters to consider here is aquatic plant and animal production, nutrient influx, depth, water quality, oxygen bottom layer. Now, lakes versus wetlands. They can be compared with the characteristics of origin, thermal stratification, vertical mixing, dominant producer, food chain, littoral pelagic ratio and productivity. Now, Majoli Island is the largest inhabited, inhabited river island in the world and is India's first island district. It is surrounded by Brahmaputra River, Kher Katia Suti, Luthi Suti and Subhansiri River. Now, Aminpur Lake is the first water body in the country to be declared a bio biodiversity heritage site under Biodiversity Act of 2002. State government in consultation with local bodies notify biodiversity heritage sites. Now, floating treatment wetlands was set up in Nikampur Lake in Hyderabad. It helps purifying the lake by breaking down and consuming organic matters in water with the help of microorganisms growing in the plant root systems of floating treatment wetlands through microbial decompositions. Now, red tide refers to harmful algal bloom which are large concentrations of aquatic microorganisms such as protozoa and unicellular algae. Nutrient enrichment, warm water, surface runoff and upwelling in seas are common cause for such plumes. Now, marine upwelling is an oceanographic phenomena that involves wind-driven motion of nutrient-rich water from deep water towards the ocean surface, thus replacing the nutrient-depleted surface water. Now, moving on to estuary ecosystems, an estuary is a place where a river or a stream opens in the sea. They are the most productive water bodies in the world. The functions of the estuary is water quality regulation, groundwater recharge, habitat to flora and fauna, development of ports, storm protection by acting as sponges and absorbing the impact of storm. Issues faced by these estuaries are commercial fishing, climate change, encroachment, dredging and pollution. Now moving on to mangroves, evergreen forests that grow in sheltered low-lying coast, estuaries, mudflats, tidal creek backwaters, marshes and lagoons of the tropical and subtropical region are known as mangroves. They are salt tolerant allophytes and are adapted to harsh ecological conditions Example Sonartia and Evansinia. Some characteristics of mangroves are require high solar radiation, produces pneumotropes, that is blind roots, aerial roots to overcome respiration problems in anaerobic soil conditions, or adventitious roots, roots emerging from main trunk of the tree. Now they exhibit viviparity mode of reproduction, that is, seeds germinate in the tree itself before falling into the ground. Some secrete excess salt through their leaves. Now, roles of the mangroves include preventing soil coastal soil erosion acting as bioshields by protecting coastal lands from tsunami and floods as they do not get uprooted during tsunami due to extensive roots. They also perform nutrient recycling, provide habitat to flora and fauna, supplies wood, fire and medicinal plants, provide employment to locals. Now, some of the mangrove profile, the mangrove profile of India goes like Sundarban deltas which are in India as well as Bangladesh, Mahanadi mangroves, Krishna and Godavari mangroves, Kaveri deltaic mangroves, Goa mangroves and Ratnagiri mangroves, and mangroves of Gujarat. Moving on to some of the print, uh, pointers for prelims, Sundarban is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is dominated by Sundari trees and is the largest single block of halophytic mangrove forest in the world. It is the only mangrove reserve in the world inhabited by tigers. The mangrove for, for the future is a regional initiative by co uh, initiative coordinated by UNDP and IUCN. It aims at promoting coastal ecosystems, conservation in tsunami hit areas, six tsunami hit countries including India. Now, coral reef. Uh, corals are mainly marine invertebrates. They are they typically live in compact colonies of many identical individual polyps. Corals are in symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae, microscopic algae which live on the corals. Zooxanthellae consists of coral, assists the coral in nutrient production, while coral polyps in return provide zooxanthellae with protected environment to live within. A coral reef is made up of a thin layer of calcium carbonate. Now, corals are of two types: hard corals and soft corals. Only hard corals build reef. Most of the world's coral are found in tropical shallow water less than 50 meter deep. Scientists estimate that more than 25,000 described species from 32 of the world's 33 animal phyla live in reef habitats. Four times the number of animal phyla fall in tropical rainforest. Now, Australia accounts for 17% and Indonesia accounts for 16% of the world's coral. They are highly productive and are also referred as tropical rainforests of the ocean. They are classified into fringing reefs, patch reefs, barrier reefs and atolls. Now, coral reefs have been included in Secretule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, thus offering it maximum protection. Also, they have been classified as Coastal Regulation Zone Type A1A under the Coastal Regulation Zone Notification of 2011. Now, uh, the 
Coral distribution in India, it goes like Gulf of Kutch has some coral, Malwan in Goa and Maharashtra region has coral, Lakshadweep has coral, Gulf of Manar has coral, Andaman and Nicobar in some portions have coral. Now, functions of coral include storm protection, habitat to flora and fauna, substrate for mangrove, calcium carbonate producer, nutrient capturing. Now, the threats are pollution, mining, intensive fishing, dredging, shipping, chloral, coral bleaching. Now, coral bleaching occurs when coral polyps expel algae that live inside their tissue. In such cases, coral lose their vibrant colors and turn white. Several reasons for coral bleaching are warm water temperature, solar irradiance, subaerial exposure, sedimentation, freshwater dilution, and epizootics, that is pathogen. In case of epizootics, the coral bleaching is irreversible. Now, moving on to Angria Bank, it is a shallow submerged atoll located 100 miles off the coast of Ratnagiri and Sindhu, Sindhu Durg district of Maharashtra. Coral reefs have been found in this area and the peculiarity of coral reefs present here is that in the middle, it is in the middle of the ocean unlike other coral reefs which are either coastal or island corals. Now Angria Banks has the potential to become India's Great Barrier Reef. Moving on to the pointers for prelims, coral reefs in use are fire corals which is, which is critically endangered. Now Orange cup coral is an invasive alien species as per GSI. Moving on the International Conference on Status and Protection of Coral Reefs that is STAPCOR 2018 took place at Bangram, Coral Island of Lakshadweep. Themes of conference was Reef for Life. Now STAPCOR takes place every 10 years since its foundation in 1998. Tamil Nadu deployed artificial reefs in one island in Munar region. Now, GSI with the help of Gujarat's forest department attempted for the first time a process to restore coral reefs using biorocks or mineral acyl creation technology. Now, biorock technology is a method that applies safe low voltage electric currents through seawater causing dissolved minerals to crystallize on structures growing into white limestones similar to that which naturally makes up coral reefs and tropical white sand beaches. The world's largest artificial coral reef installed is installed in Maldives. Now, Coral Bleaching Alert System has been deployed by Indian National Centre for Ocean Information Services. Coral Reef Recovery Project is a joint venture between Wildlife Trust of India and Gujarat Forest Department. Reef Watch India is an NGO that has taken up two projects that is Reef Build and Reef Grow, that is Regrow and Rebuild. Now, Palau is first country to ban reef toxic sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen include common ingredients like oxybenzone that disrupt coral reproduction, cause coral bleaching and damage coral DNA. Now, International coral, coral Reef Initiative is an informal partnership between nations and organizations that strive to preserve coral reefs and related ecosystems worldwide. The initiative was founded in 1994. India is a member but not a founding member. Decisions are not binding and it is not a UN body.